Good morning and happy Tuesday, everybody. Stephen Zom here with another episode of Tooth Teacher Tuesday. Picking up where we left off a couple weeks ago in our mini series on dental insurances. Last time we were talking about why some dentists don't accept dental insurance, and we kind of left with a cliffhanger about you know what's coming down the pipeline as far as dental insurance reform to encourage more dentists to accept dental insurances and to help patients get the most out of their of their benefits. So I'm just going to talk about a couple um, different things that are happening right now in dentistry that are making that happen. Um, first thing that comes to mind is coming very soon here in the state of Indiana as a bill um, Senate Bill 136 that just recently passed and will take effect July 1st. And that, that bill is related to non-covered procedures. And what I mean by that is, if you recall a couple weeks back, we talked about how dental insurances, when a dentist is contracted with them, in-network with them, they have to take an in-network write-off and then the dental insurance company pays some benefit and then the patient pays the remaining portion. Now what these stinkers at the insurance companies have been doing historically, both in Indiana and throughout the country, is there are certain procedures, more involved procedures such as dental implants or orthodontics that a lot of dental insurances don't provide any benefits for. Um, but they've kind of been uh, skimming off the top, so to speak, in the sense that the dental insurance companies, even though they provide no benefit, will still tell the dentist that, hey, that, that implant that you're charging $1,000 for, um, we're gonna make you take that in-network write-off of $500, um, but then they provide no benefit beyond that, so the patient's responsible for the remaining 500. Well, patient thinks that the dentist got paid 500 from the dental insurance company and then they're paying 500, when in reality, they didn't have any benefit. The dentist just kind of got screwed out of half their usual fee. And so what this new legislature here in Indiana has accomplished is that now the dentists have to, excuse me, the insurance companies have to either provide coverage, some sort of benefit, in order to enforce the in-network write-off, or they can't enforce the in-network write-off at all. So that means that either the patient's going to pay $1,000 out of pocket, or the dental insurance company can say, you know, you have to write off $500, but here we're going to pay $300 of that, so the patient's responsible for the remaining $200. And so it's really lit a fire under the dental insurance company's butts because now patients are upset that they're paying the full a thousand out of pocket and so it's put pressure on these dental insurance companies to start providing more benefits for these other procedures that they historically haven't covered so that's one great thing that's happened here in indiana um, another big thing that's coming down the pipeline is the uh, indiana dental association is working very closely with our state legislature to pass a bill that's going to improve reimbursement with Indiana's dental Medicaid programs. Um, believe it or not, reimbursement from Medicaid to dentists has not been updated since 1999. And uh, I think you'll agree with me that there's been a lot of inflation in this country in over 20 years. So, that explains why so few dentists are working with Medicaid right now is that they're getting paid the same amount they would have been paid in 1999. Um, which basically means that if they work with Medicaid patients, they're losing money. And, you know, it's not all about money, but at a certain point, you, you can't just be throwing away all of, all of your profit. You have to at least break even. And so what this legislature is hoping to accomplish is to update those reimbursement fees to the dentist to more modern times so that, you know, the dentist is getting at least fairly compensated uh, while still providing a service to those patients that need it. And 
the hope obviously being that more dentists will start accepting Medicaid and taking care of those patients as well. Um, then the final thing I want to mention is taking a step back from Indiana to a bigger picture here. Big news a couple months ago was that the state of Massachusetts um, question two on their ballot back in November uh, was a, a question related to reimbursement and use of funds by these dental insurance companies. Um, basically what this legislature accomplished is historically when you pay your insurance company deductible the thought is that that deductible is going to then go towards your benefits that you eventually use. Um, but historically throughout the country but also in Massachusetts those funds that they get from your deductibles about 50% of that goes towards your benefits and the remaining 50% goes to administrative fees, which basically is the fees it takes for them to pay their bills, pay their overhead. Um, but most of that 50%, as you can imagine, goes towards paying the big wigs at the top, the CEOs and whatnot, who are making seven, eight figure salaries. So, you know, boo-hoo for them. What this new legislation in uh, Massachusetts has accomplished is stated that dental insurances have to use a minimum of 83% of those funds from your deductibles, the money that you've paid them, a minimum of 83% has to go towards patient benefits, which means that at most 17% can go towards administrative fees. Um, so that's great. That means that's going to create more funds for patients to have towards their dental treatment. Um, and it started a shockwave that other states throughout the country are hoping to accomplish the same thing. And the only problem with this is, you know, it's, it's great, but my fear is there's going to be some sort of backlash because we all know the big wigs at the top don't want to see a hit towards their salary. And so while I think it's great, that more funds are available for patients to use, I think what's gonna end up happening to recoup their losses is that these big insurance companies are either going to start laying off employees so that the big wigs can get their money back or they'll end up just raising the amount of money it costs to pay your deductible to again, re recoup their loss. And so I think in the end, I don't know it's going to accomplish much, but for the time being, until they do that, people in Massachusetts are very happy that they're seeing an increase in their dental benefits. Um, but that's, that's kind of what's going on right now in the world of dental insurance reform. Um, next time we'll pick up, a, you know, next week will be another episode of the oral pathology corner, but then in a couple weeks, we'll resume another episode on, on dental insurance. And we'll talk about some, some of the cold hard truths about how these dental insurance companies operate and how they're a little bit sneaky. We'll leave it at that to say the least. Um, but in the meantime, I hope this was informative. Uh, if you have any questions further about any of these pieces of legislature that I've talked about, you know, it's all public knowledge. You can look any of these up online or feel free to reach out in the comment section and I'll be happy to answer any questions there as well. But in the meantime, hope you have a great Tuesday and we will see you next week.